Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another week. Yeah, we, today we start a new month as well. It's wonderful to start the month just looking into God's word and uh, learning more from him. All right, uh, let's just begin this time, the word of prayer. Uh, Charles, would you like to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful morning. What a beautiful morning. We thank you for us who are in the morning, but others are in the night. Whatever part of the day it is, we thank you. And now that we are set to continue to study about what you did, so that we will be able to see uh, what you are going to do, Lord, it's you who is preparing us. Continue to teach us through our lecture, and that even what we learn, it will be you who is teaching us. For you promised that you alone is going to teach us, and you're going to be established in the righteousness. Do it for the glory of your name and for our good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Charles. All right. Uh, so we stopped last week we started with chapter eight and then we stopped in between uh now before we just do a review uh just want to keep you all informed that uh we've almost come to the end of our portions uh we'll be going to chapter nine probably from uh next week so next monday and tuesday uh we should be able to uh finish our entire portions and then we will also uh, I'll work on the final assessment as well. I'll post it up and then you can begin to work on that as well. So uh, so hopefully uh, next Monday and Tuesday uh, should be the last class because almost come to the end of our portions. Okay, let's do a quick review of what we did last week. Last week, we, uh, when we looked at chapter eight on the pursuit of revival, uh, we looked at how it's important that we need to have a heart of continually pursuing after God, right? Uh, we picked up examples as well. We looked at Jeremiah, how he yeah, he was pursuing after God. Again, Elijah, he pursued after God. Uh, and then we also looked at uh, stirring ourselves up because sometimes we are praying and we've been praying, praying, and we don't see results. Uh, uh, and it's very easy to give up. Uh, but God is teaching us. The Holy Spirit encourages us. Paul also writes to Timothy and he says, stir up your heart, fan into flame the passion for God's name. Right? So it's very important that we ourselves stir, you know, stir our hearts up. Now, it, this is not only towards you know, revival, but we can also stir our hearts up for the things of God. Right? Uh, for example, uh, we want to grow in the Lord. We want to read the word. We, we need to stir ourselves up. We want to, you know, uh, uh, improve in the way we teach or preach the word, in the way we minister to people, uh, many things. The way we, uh, maybe if we are singers or musicians in the worship team, you know, to build ourselves up in that area. So there should be a constant stirring within ourselves. Uh, and that's what will keep us going. That's what will uh, help us to pursue God more and more. And we also looked at the heart condition for revival praying. You know, uh, uh, we've been talking about prayer being such an essential part of revival. Uh, but we must also remember that, you know, the heart condition is very important. Uh, uh, if you remember, we picked up a few examples on, uh, you know, how Peter... The disciple, uh, you know, he his heart was, you know, he was after after Jesus died, resurrected. His heart was saying, "No, I don't think I want to do this." But when the Lord Jesus met with him, he said, "Will you take up? Will you look after my sheep?" We saw that his heart condition was completely changed. Right? Uh, uh, he was he was willing to let go. He was willing to do what God called him to do. So, here's the thing. When we are praying, uh, make sure that our heart is right. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, if we are praying, God, one day, five years down the line, I want to be this uh, pastor of a church with, you know, 
10,000 people and everyone should know me, then we, we know that the, the motives are wrong. Right. Our motive should not be to become famous and all of that, but our motive should be to pursue God, to make sure our heart is right before God. And that's when God begins to pour out his spirit on us. Then we looked at a few heart conditions when we are praying for revival that we should maintain personally. A humble heart. We looked at uh, the example of King Saul. He was a simple man. Uh, he, the Bible says that he thought very small of himself. That's why God chose Saul to be the king of Israel. But after he became the king, uh, a few years later on, he he rejects the uh, you know the, the the prophecies and the words that Samuel gives him, the instructions that Samuel gives him, and he does something else. And uh, Samuel reminds him, Saul, there was a time when you thought too small of yourself, but now um, you've gone away from God. And, and so it's very important that we humble ourselves. Humility is the key to ministry. It is, it is, it is, it's the key. Jesus walked in humility. Nowhere in the scriptures uh, do we see Jesus you know, boasting about himself. He just spoke the truth. It when, when we read it, it looks like he's boasting, but it's not. He's just speaking the truth. He's saying, hey, before Abraham was, I am, which is the truth. Right? Uh, so our heart needs to be humble. Right? Uh, it, yes, of course, sometimes, you know, uh, we may feel, uh, especially if your leaders or your pastors, you know, your church members come and say, hey, thank you for leading worship. It was a wonderful time. Or oh, the word was really a blessed time. I enjoyed myself. Oh, thank you for the word. I really ministered. It's very easy to, to let pride creep in. Right? Or oh, thank you for praying for me. After you prayed, you know, I received my healing. Uh, sometimes you feel, oh, maybe I prayed. And so that's why he received healing. Uh, and so sometimes it's very easy to allow pride to come into our hearts. And so we need to guard our hearts as we pray for revival. <clears throat> Sorry. And then we pick up from here. Uh, I'm on page 96, the second point, which is a heart that is hungry. Right Now, we did look at the scriptures. We did look at you know previous revivals and God answered those who were hungry for his presence. Right? God responds to those who are hungry and thirsty. Right? Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Right? So it's a blessed thing. It's a wonderful thing to be hungry for more of God. Now, here's a little paradox uh, the word paradox means a sentence which uh, are almost opposite to each other, but they make sense, right? a paradox. God has filled us with his presence. He's filled us with his Holy Spirit, yet we are still being filled. We are still hungry. We are still thirsty. Right? So there's, there's a paradox. God is saying, I've filled you. With, your Holy, with the Holy Spirit. And here we are saying, we are also saying, God, I want more. I, I fill me with more of your presence. I'm still hungry. I'm still thirsty. I'm still yearning and desiring for more of you. And so even as we continue in our day-to-day -day life, remember to be to let your heart always be hungry for the it could be for the word of God. It could be for worship. You know, God may put desires in each of our hearts. Right? Um, uh, this is uh, one example. Uh, there's this pastor in uh, this happened uh, in the city of Bangalore, um, and you know, God put this hunger in his heart to start times of worship, right? Worship times, and uh, you know, let just you know uh, something like a twelve hours worship each day. And he began to do that. You know, a few people would come together and they would have constant times of worship. And it was a wonderful, you know, 
uh, movement. Many people from many churches would come and, you know, any time of the day you come, there's worship going on. Now, I'm not talking about playing a, a, a CD or a, playing music on the laptop. I'm not talking about that, but a worship team leading in worship and uh, calling on the presence of God. Uh, and we've seen, you know, during that whole time, many people received healing. Many people were comforted. Uh, and and why did that happen? Because when we are hungry, when we desire more of God, God will, you know, fill us. He will respond to our hunger. Right? Hosea chapter 6. Hosea is a wonderful book. right? It talks about how Israel, uh, you know, has gone away from its first love. Uh, and... You know, he, Israel went, that's why God tells Hosea, go and marry a prostitute, just to bring the whole uh, uh, aspect of Israel, how God and Israel, the relationship between God and Israel. And so Hosea is a wonderful book. Towards the end of the book, Hosea chapter 6 onwards, he's saying, come, let us return to the Lord. Let's read that. Hosea chapter 6, 1 to 3. Uh, can one of us please read that? Um, Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. It's in the notes. Yes, go ahead. If anyone can read Hosea 6, 1 to 3. Yes, Pastor Henry. Hosea 6, 1 to 3 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge, let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, Uh, Verse 3. Yes, Pastor, just a minute. I think I'm not able to go down the... Okay, uh, I'll just read that. Verse 3. Yeah. Thank you, Avni. Thank you. Uh, verse 3. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. So... Uh, yeah, I want to encourage you, read the book of Hosea. It's a very powerful book because it just talks about, you know, even our failure as human beings. We, we make a lot of mistakes. Uh, but how God, even when we, we, when we are hungry for God and even in those failures, when we return to him, uh, uh, I like that verse in verse one. He says, uh, he has torn us, but he will also heal us. He has stricken, but he will also bind us. Right? Hosea was hungry for the people of Israel to come back to God. He was saying, don't, don't abandon God. Don't abandon what God has for you. Don't go to a prostitute or don't go to the things of this world, abandoning the God who created you. Uh, and so he was very hungry. He was, he was very, uh, you know, his heart was so moved by what was happening in the nation of Israel. Uh, and we see towards the end that God uh, God turned the entire nation through this one man, Hosea. When I talk about the nation, I'm talking about uh, the northern Israel. And so it's wonderful that, you know, the more we are hungry, the more God will hear our prayers. Right? Now, I'm not only talking about revival, but it could be anything that we've been praying for. Uh, never stop being hungry. Right. Uh, never come to a place where we feel, okay, I think uh, uh, this should be enough. No, we should always say, God, want more of your presence. Right. Uh, third one, a heart that is passionate and persistent. Right. Uh, now, we did look at the example of Elijah <clears throat> and uh, the book of Elijah in, in James chapter 5. Uh, James is talking about Elijah and how he... Uh, you know, he prayed for rain and he was persistent in his prayer. Elijah didn't give up, right? 
he was passionate in his prayer as well right whenever you, we we see elijah we we see the prophet uh, he was passionate right uh, even as he was in you know, in mount carmel he was so passionate about god right even here when he was praying for the rain he was passionate he was persistent he knew that god will answer his prayers right so when we pray with for revival when we pray for our own families for our own personal lives our ministries we must pray with a heart that is on fire we must be passionate about what we are doing we must be zealous and not give up until we see god's move in our midst right uh, the reason we need to be persistent is because sometimes you know we can be passionate about things but we may lose the sense of being persistent right let me give you this example when i just uh, became a believer uh, it usually happens to everyone where you know you just become a believer you're so excited you're passionate about god and i said okay i'm going to do this right i'm going to pray and i'm going to fast and pray for so many days maybe i don't remember how many days it was but maybe about 10 12 days uh and so i would do that right i said god you have to do this for me you 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 have to you know fill me with your holy spirit and help me this way and that way and i would fast and pray right so the first month two months three months six months and i realized after six months i was still the same right uh, through all the fasting through all the uh, you know uh, uh, times of sacrifice and prayers and all of that everything was still the same i thought to myself you know i i noticed that i didn't want to fast anymore i didn't uh, I, i would pray <clears throat> but i didn't want to fast anymore and uh, you know only because i didn't see the answers to the prayers now what was in my mind was okay if i fast and pray um god will give it to me right uh now that was a wrong understanding right yes god expects us to fast pray and uh, seek him and all of that uh but it does not mean that when we fast pray immediately we will see the answers that is why you know and later on i came to know and i came to this understanding that hey it's not only about being passionate for god it's also this thing of being persistent in prayer i remember as a young boy i was reading the story of elijah uh, uh and you know a lot of it didn't make sense in the old testament to me but uh, uh because i just knew in the lord just learning but when i read the book of uh, first kings second kings i began to understand that hey god you know does not always answer immediately and we need to be persistent in our prayers maybe some of us are praying for the church praying for uh things in your personal life your ministries your family uh, and we haven't seen it come to pass right uh so uh we must be persistent right i was just sharing uh with the first years the last week um somewhere around 2010 um 2010 I guess 2009 2010 I uh, walked into APC right and we had this main church uh we had about I think it was about 500 odd people in the church and I went up to the balcony and sitting up there and uh, uh as I was sitting there I was looking at the worship team the worship team was you know they were playing so wonderfully right uh, uh more than the worship and all of that I was I was looking at the team you know they were so well coordinated so many instruments uh you got the guitars two guitars and the bass guitar drummer keyboard everyone the vocalist the, the the entire band was so well you know connected they were playing in such unit it was wonderful right and i was in awe of the worship team and i remember that sunday 2010 uh i remember that very clearly the lord very clearly spoke to me in my spirit and said one day i will let i will make you lead the worship in this place now 2010 i just probably knew about four or five chords the guitar i, I really didn't know anything much uh not much of a singer as well uh, never really tried it but <clears throat> but i remember taking that word 
and I would say, God, yes, you know, well, if you're going to use me, if you feel that one day I can lead worship here, help me. And, you know, I would fast, pray. One year over, nothing happened. Uh, I was still doing the, you know, the volunteering in the church. I was happy with that. I was not grumbling. But I was happy with serving within the church. But I also remember that word. And so one year over, two years. And somewhere in the middle, I gave up praying for that. I said, okay, it's okay. Uh, forget about it. Let's let's pray about other stuff. You know, there are people and there are things that are happening around us. But every time I would, you know, put that away, the Holy Spirit would remind me to pray for that. And so I said, I would just say a small prayer. God, if it's your will, you will open doors and you will, you know, give me the opportunity to lead in central or the main church so that, uh, you know, just a simple prayer. But it was very, a very half-hearted prayer. Uh, many years went by, and it, it was, I think it was 2016 or 17, no, 2017 of January, uh, you know, there was a need, and uh, our worship pastor came up to me and said, Paul, would you like to lead the worship in this place, in the main church? Now, it's not easy to, you know, if, if, We've, we, you know, you got this whole audition process, and uh, you got very good musicians in our worship team. So it was not easy, you know, to get into the music worship team. Uh, I, I auditioned, I got in, and I remember January. I think it was January sixteenth, uh, two thousand seventeen, <clears throat> first Sunday. I, you know, I remember on that stage, and I looked up, and I thought, hey, seven years back, God spoke to me about this. God said that I will lead the worship. Uh, and God did it, right? Uh, seven years later, here's the thing. The, the reason I'm saying, I'm telling you the story is because sometimes we desire everything, whether it's ministry, whether it's our work, we desire everything to happen in an instant. God, within one year, can you give me this? Or maybe within two years, can you give me this? God made me wait seven years you know, just to lead worship in that place. Same thing with sharing the word. Um, it was 2000 and somewhere around 2010, 2011. Um, you know, I, I, we, I finished with my Bible college. I thought, okay, I am ready to share the word. And I was so full of zeal, so full of passion. I never got any opportunity. And God made me wait, wait, wait. I waited for about five years to preach a first sermon in, uh, in APC, in, you know, in the church. So, so here's the thing. When we are passionate for God, Remember to also be persistent, persistent in prayer. Don't give up. God, it's been two years, three years, nothing's happening. Don't give up. You know, look at the promise of God than the time frame. God is able to restore those times. I always say this to young people. Uh, God is able to do something in two years what we try to do in 10 years, we are, we are working hard, we do something, it takes 10 years. God is able to do it in two years or even in a year. So we tell young people in our church, first look to God and let out of him, let everything flow. And so as we are praying, remember to be passionate, but also remember to be persistent, right? The next point, a heart that is compassionate. When we praying, for people, when we are praying for cities, nations, for the move of God, our emotions are involved. Our heart is not cold, right? We can't say, okay, God, uh, you know, let the Holy Spirit move only among Christians or let the Holy Spirit move only in the Pentecostal church or only in the Methodist church or only in the non-denominational church. We can't do that, right? Our heart should be compassionate. Our heart should say, God, this is what you have given me. Let it be for everybody. Let everyone experience the presence of God. Uh, a heart that feels <clears throat> pain, a heart that feels agony, uh, uh, anguish for sin, a heart that is, uh, you know, uh, 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 is always saying, God, bless these people. They don't know who, who you are. Um, and wonderful thing is Jesus himself, he ministered out of compassion. Right. Uh, it's wonderful when we read the book of John. It's 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 so interesting because uh, you know the the thousands of people 
that followed Jesus, Jesus knew that they were not, uh, you know, they only wanted healing. They didn't, they didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, they just wanted the healings. They just wanted the miracles. And yet they followed Jesus up that mountain, wherever he went, thousands of people came. Jesus knew their heart, but what does he say? He had compassion on them and healed them. And he had compassion on them. And so when we pray, we are to have compassion on people. Just a couple of days back, uh, I got this message, and uh, this message is from one of our past, one of the pastors uh, in our nation, and he was he had sent a few prayer points of few pastors in North India who have been arrested, and they've been arrested on false accusations of conversion and all of that, and. Now they're in prison for the past seven months. At six, seven months, they're there, all pastors. The moment I read that message, my heart sank within me. And I thought to myself, these pastors are in prison for six to seven months away from their family. Maybe they have children. Maybe they have small children. Maybe, you know, they just uh, small time pastors they don't have thousands of people they just have few people in the church uh, but they're in prison and and here we are in the city you know enjoying it's wonderful you know god has given us uh, blessed us we, we enjoy the benefits of living in a city city life and all of that um, god has provided for us but my heart really sank and i said god let righteousness let justice prevail bring them out, reunite them with their families. You know, uh, nowadays we see pastors being arrested and then in two, three days, okay, you know, somebody comes and helps them. Uh, maybe these pastors are just, you know, I, I, we don't know them. Maybe they're just in some village, a uh, small village and going through difficult times, nobody there to help them. And it's been six, seven months in the jail for something that they didn't do wrong. Uh, and and so uh, I really, you know, we really prayed with a burden for them. That's when God begins to answer, and we we prayed. And so it's very important that we stay compassionate, our heart be tuned to the things that is happening around us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then we also need to remember what to pray for when we are praying for revival. Just a few points here: uh, what to pray for when we are praying for revival. We can pray for repentance, consecration, yielding, and surrender. So we pray, God, forgive our sins, forgive our heart, forgive our wrongdoings. Then we can say, God, we concentrate our life to you. Sorry, consecrate our life to you. Uh, we consecrate our uh, unholy desires. We consecrate it. Uh, and uh, and we the things, the weights of this world, the sins of this world, we lay it aside. We consecrate our lives to you. Right? And then we pray for yielding and surrender, meaning say, God, we yield, we surrender to your plan. Whatever you want to do in and through us, do it. We empty ourselves. We let go of our personal agendas and we make ourselves available to the Lord. Right? Uh, these are just a few pointers. It's not that you, you know, have to follow these orders. Just a few points that will help us as we pray. Pray for more of God an outpouring of God, pray for the manifestation of the glory and the power of God. Right? We studied on the glory and the power as well. What happens is goodness, his mercy, his uh, healing, deliverance, conviction of the Holy Spirit. All of that happens when uh, there's a manifestation of the glory of God. Very important, pray for the salvation of lost souls. Right? Pray for the salvation of lost souls. Those those who are in the city, you pray. Uh, uh, you probably you can pick up points as you know praying for uh, drug addicts, praying for those who are uh, into prostitution, child abuse, and uh, uh, you know those who are going through uh, suicidal tendencies, uh, depression. Uh, you know, oh, many, many, many things we can pray for. So pray for the salvation of the lost, right? That God would intervene and do it work in their lives as well. Then pray for transformation of community. Uh, yesterday at church, we, we were praying that, you know, for our community as, as a whole in our city, that people will 
you know, change, that people's hearts will change, that there shouldn't be any kind of, uh, you know, hatred among people. Uh, the verse uh, uh, in the Bible talks about the enemy. He comes but to kill, to steal, to destroy. He brings hatred, he brings jealousy, he brings all these things uh, into people's hearts and lives. And so we need to pray for transformation of communities. And then we also need to pray that we as believers exercise kingdom authority and dominion. We say, God, you have called us. Now we declare uh, your kingdom in our lives, in our community, right? We declare your authority. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 uh, is wonderful. It talks about, uh, sorry, I think that's 2 Corinthians 10 talks about the weapons of our warfare. Ephesians 6 talks about, uh, you know, the, the uh, armor of God. And so we are to exercise the kingdom authority and dominion that God has given us, right? Uh, where we say, God, let every darkness be removed and let your marvelous light uh, come forth into people's lives and hearts. Uh, and so when we are praying for revival, we can just remember these points, right? Uh, uh, probably if you're a life group leader, cell group leader, or a leader in the church uh, looking after certain ministries, go ahead and implement these points. Uh, now, you may have five people praying in the prayer group. Don't think it's insignificant. It's not, right? Uh, God, if you remember the, what happened in the hybrids islands, uh, the, the, you know, God used two 80-year-old women. They prayed with fervency. They prayed for a move and God moved in that island. Two 80-year-old people with sickness, right? Uh, with sicknesses in their bodies and God did a work. So never think we are insignificant. Our prayers are very important. Uh, our prayers is God desires to hear our prayers, right? So uh, then we can also pray and fast. Uh, fasting intensifies the prayers. Uh, fasting brings deliverance, victory. Uh, fasting, again, prepares for the latter rain. And so all through the Bible, Isaiah talks about the chosen fast and how uh, in addition to fasting and seeking the Lord, we need to work on our relationship with people. We need to stop putting burdens on others, stop finding faults, stop, uh, you know, looking at... Uh, uh, speaking ill of others. Now, here's the thing. Imagine this. What if we are fasting for 21 days? Right? For example, we say, okay, I'm going to fast for 21 days and pray. Now, we're doing that. And then we're also, if we get angry or upset, uh, you know, uh, just picture this. Uh, you're fasting 21 days, uh, always in prayer. And then suddenly, you know, uh, you, you're at home um, and then or you're at the workplace and suddenly we get angry at somebody, maybe our um, family member or our colleague. What's happening? People will, may say, hey, what do you miss? Or your family members itself may say, hey, well, you're fasting and praying, but it looks like you're getting angry even more than before. or uh, doesn't look like, you know, there's a change. So fasting and prayer is not just a target that we should have, right? Or oh, 21 days. No, it's it's not about a target. It's not about, okay, I've fasted for 21 days and so God should do something. No, it's about the heart condition, as we always say. If we, if we are fasting and praying and only talking about ill, ill about others and, you know, causing uh, ill-treating people, putting burdens on others, there's no point of the fast, right? Uh, when we look at Isaiah 58, he talks about that. He says, you people fast, but then when you fast, after that you go and you talk to, and you go to the squares and talk all unwanted things and uh, you, you, you allow yourself to live in sin. Uh, and God is not pleased with that fast. So it's very important as we, we combine our pursuit with God of God uh, with prayer and fasting, but also, there's a responsibility of living out uh, the godly life and our relationships with the people around us, right? Uh, I remember this uh, 
a uh, young man uh, many years ago uh, he had uh, come to me and his mother came to me and said oh a pastor can you please talk to him uh, i said what's the matter no he's only fasting and praying at home uh, you know but he's not looking out for a job he's just sitting at home yeah, of course he's praying he's fasting he's not doing anything wrong in the sense like he's not on uh the internet or not on the tv the whole day but he is he's fasting he's praying doing all that um but he would not talk to any of us he would not uh, you know uh, spend time with us he would not look out for a job uh he'll just be in his room uh, i know that he's doing you know prayer or reading or he's doing something fruitful but uh, how long can he do this right uh, we need to support our family and every time i tell him he would get upset he would say you know you're not trusting god uh, when we pray god will answer our prayers god will provide for us so i had to really sit with this young man i had to tell him see it's wonderful that god is you know uh, put this in your heart to fast and pray and sit and seek his face um, but just by praying uh, you know this god is not going to you know say okay every month i'll provide for the rent or I, i'll provide for the groceries no god has given us the responsibility to work oh find a job so i had to pick up a lot of examples i had to say how we need to you know in as we walk the spiritual we also need to fulfill the things in the natural uh, and so i told him this example when god made adam and he put him in the garden he didn't say adam go sit under the tree and enjoy yourself or just keep praying to me no he said adam till the ground work on it and then when you work on it i will make it fruitful i will make it multiply so after explaining a lot he got the whole understanding you know uh, so it's very important that we understand these things spiritual truths we're praying for revival we're praying for a move of god we're praying for our families whatever we're doing praying but also do the practical things of you know uh, being with your family providing for the family uh, you know uh, living a godly life setting up good examples within our house within our community right and finally we can all engage in uh pursuing him which means sometimes we can feel overwhelmed and i personally have felt that oh this challenge is too much i don't think this is a call for me in my life i'll just pray for you know i'll just be an evangelist or i'll just be this pastor or uh you know i'll just be this worship leader uh no uh, each of us can start where we are um i remember i think it was rupa who was saying that you know if he has a small prayers at home it's all right you know we 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 can start where we are right don't wait for the bigger things start small the bible teaches us do not despise meager beginnings though your beginnings are small your your end will be great your latter days will be great right so it's okay uh, it may look insignificant people may laugh people may say oh look at these three people or five five people are coming together praying for revival for a, such a big nation uh, that's okay let even if people mock or ridicule you continue praying continue seeking god continue engaging and pursuing him pursuing a move of god and it's never going to be a waste right so we end with this chapter uh chapter 8 and then what we'll do is next week uh, sorry tomorrow we'll start with chapter 9 uh and then uh, we should follow this up from uh, maybe next monday or tuesday should be our last week uh right uh any questions any thoughts uh, i know that most of you have uh, posted your assignments too uh, thank you i will uh, i've been looking at it i will mark them and i'll put the marks up as well um just another reminder uh, probably uh tomorrow after our class i will post our final semester uh e- exam so you can also begin to work on that it's going to be very simple I'll, uh so you can work on that and then uh uh you can submit it by the due date that is mentioned so 
Right. Any any questions? Any thoughts? Uh, has the study been good? Has it has it been able to help you? Uh, is it uh, you know is it something that we are going to apply in our lives? All right. So it's wonderful. It's good. Uh, what we'll do is we'll close now uh, and we will pick up from tomorrow with chapter nine uh, about the assessment. Okay, Samuel. Uh, uh, about the assessment, uh, need word limit. No, it's uh, you don't really need a word limit. Uh, it, uh, it's basically, see, it's an open book. So you can probably put points. You can write an essay, whatever you feel like. It's going to be just regular, you know, I'm not going to ask you complicated questions, just just so that we understand. Can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, yes, Samuel, go ahead. Um, no, what I meant was, uh, in this first one, what I realized was, uh, because of the questions, I mean, I could write on and on, but then I didn't know how long to go on. I mean, it was almost... Like you could, about like Paul Seamus and Jeremy is also about uh, all the revivals and uh, the character and then the events. So I found myself, and I don't know, I'm, I mean, I think it's okay, uh, but uh, I was thinking like if Pastor had given like 500 words or something like that, it would okay. probably help me a little bit. Uh, because I didn't know how long to write or how short to write. Yeah. So I was writing in terms of the math. So I mean, yeah. just a study. Yeah. But but it's also. I mean, I think it's just me. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, yes, what you're saying is true. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot we can write, especially when the question is like, you know, write about any person and the revivals and what you learned from that. Uh, so uh, as you said, uh, maybe from the next semester I can. Uh, the reason I put the marks there is so we can just write, okay, 10 marks, maybe 10 lines about it. So, um, or if it's five marks, just write five marks. If it's 20 marks, just write maybe 15, 15 lines, 15 to 18 lines. So, um, so depending on the marks, you can just uh, write accordingly. Uh, yeah, so. All right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, any thoughts? Or we can close in prayer. Okay. All right. Let's close in prayer. Uh, Avni, can you please close in prayer for us? Yeah. Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful to you, Father. From the bottom of our hearts, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for teaching us such beautiful words of life and teaching us how to move in your realm, Father, in victory, in your grace and mercy, Father, and see the move of the Holy Spirit in such mighty way through the lives of people, Lord Father, who chose to seek you, who chose to do your will, and Father, who were burdened by the heart that you have for your people, Father. You just want to thank you, Father, for the way you have led people in the history, Father, and the way you want to lead us, Father. In days to come, Father, may we be burdened with the, uh, with the same heart that you have for your people when we see around, Father. Uh, and Father, we would see a mighty move amidst us, Father. And Lord, Father, we just want to thank you for teaching us so well through our teachers. We want to bless them all, Father, with your wisdom and favor to carry them their duties out, Father, as they're doing it heartfully, Father. We just want to thank you for each of our teachers and for Pastor Paul as well. Bless him and his family, Father. Continue to lead each of us and our families, Father, in your plans and purposes that we may do your will. And Lord Father, in the days to come, we may see your mighty move in our city, in our nation, in our localities, Father. We would just want to thank you once again for everything that you have provided for us, Father, so that we could know you more, love you more, and walk in you more. Once again, we thank you and we bless your holy name. In the matchless and precious name of Jesus, our Savior, we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Avni. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we will catch up tomorrow and pick up from Chapter 9. God bless you. Have a great day ahead.